and we are rolling now, everybody. Woo! Shoes are coming in hot. All right, I know we're talking a lot about shoes right now, but it's because it's the trail running season, and today I was able to get up a 14,000 foot mountain in Colorado. Yes, in the Salming Trail 5 running shoes. Trail running shoes, I should say. And by the way, Salming, Kudos to you for just keeping your branding simple. I love the fact that this shoe is just, it's just called Trail 5. It's I so, I love that. Like simplicity in, in marketing and branding goes a long way with me. Sometimes you get these, these running shoes that are just, first of all, the names are hard to pronounce. You don't understand uh, the iteration system, like the different types of shoes within this lineup. Anyway, thank you, Salming, for that. Okay. Here we go. First impressions. This is not my full review. We'll do that after 50 miles. First of all, a couple specs for all of you. It's a five millimeter drop in the Salming Trail 5. So from heel to toe, five millimeter. Pretty good. You know, I like the six to eight, as you all know, but five millimeter, we will take it. It's a 24 millimeter stack height in the heel and 19 in the forefoot. All right. And as far as weight goes in a, in a men's size nine, we're looking at 286 grams or just over 10 ounces. And, and for that weight, it's a that's a pretty standard weight for a trail running shoes. Just so you know, trail shoes always weigh a little bit more than road shoes because the outsole usually is a little more built up uh, with more uh, rubber, uh, more lug depth, all of that. And, and oftentimes the upper, and we're gonna talk about that right now, the upper also has a couple extra features to help protect your feet from the mud, from the from the crossing streams, from the rocks, the sticks, all of that stuff. So pretty good weight there. And for the upper, so there's a lot a lot going on here in the upper. I'm not going to cover all of it. We'll we'll save that for the full review. Um, I was a little concerned about the tongue uh, when I was lacing up at the base of the mountain today, but actually it did okay. In fact, it was pretty comfortable. It just feels and looks even like it's a little. Um, it's not going to lay flat on your on the top of your foot, but sure enough, it did it did just fine. The, the tongue of this Trail Five. Now, what I do want to talk about mostly is this Rock Shield rubber overlay here on the toe box at the front of the toe box. What I would call a toe cap, and it was awesome. I crossed probably 10 streams today, and my feet really never got that wet. Um, and I was kicking rocks and like it was an aggressive trail climb, uh, mountain climb I should say. And this rock shield rubber overlay was just like I never stubbed my toe. I never felt like there was a uh, little tiny grit and rock like sneaking in through the upper. So good job Salming on this uh, rock shield overlay rubber at the base, at the, at the front of the shoe. Right, on, right in front of the toe box. And for the midsole right here, Salming has developed this trademarked, it's called their Recoil Soft Foam, all right? I actually don't know that much about it yet. I'm gonna continue to research for all of you. Um, and it's supposed to give a lot of good energy return through your gait cycle. Did I feel that today? I did not, only because honestly, I was going pretty slow today since I'm coming back from my injury. So I was just chilling out. But as I continue to increase the speed of the mountain ascents, uh, moving forward in this training block, I will keep you posted if I'm feeling a little bit of goodness in that energy return through the midsole. Today, I did not feel it, but that doesn't mean it's not there. I just need to, I need to pick up the speeds a little bit to feel that out. And moving on, what else? Okay, uh, I'll save that for the quick drawback here in a second. For the outsole on the Trail 5, it's a four millimeter lug depth. So the lugs there, I actually, they look shorter than four millimeters to me, but that's that's a good lug, lug depth. And I was in all sorts of crazy conditions, mud, rocks, snow, water, and the, the outsole gripped really, really well. Even in the snow, I never, did I fall? No, I just plunged my foot down once into the snow today. But uh, so good work on the, and it's a Vibram outsole. I should also mention that Vibram is, is very uh, tough. It's a tougher material and it grips really, really well on like slick and wet rock. And so I could, I, I felt great today with the outsole there. So, and I bet, I bet it's going to be durable. Uh, obviously, I've only done one run in them, but I, I'm guessing this outsole is going to last a long, long time. And I'll just mention that right now. I can, I, there's so many shoes like, okay, why not? Hold on. And this is not a comparison video, but like when I pick up the Solomon Speed Cross 5 and hold it in my hands, and then I pick up the Salming Trail 5, interesting that they're both fives, I can feel quality. You know what I mean? I just feel 
high build quality holding both of them okay and i love you know how much i love the solomon lineup so i can sense that i don't know where salming is doing their production in fact i might be able to see here okay vietnam and then developed in gothenburg sweden so i don't know just like it feels well built you know sometimes you you pick up a shoe and you just sense like eh, this feels a little cheap to hold in your hands for the fit went true to size we're good there no issues with going with my normal sizing i will just say though okay and that, i should i'll mention that's front that's the length of the shoe is good it's a little wide it's in fact it's kind of like a boat inside there inside the inner cavity of the trail five it's a wider toe box. It felt good actually. It kind of it felt good today. I usually like a little more of a narrow fit, which I which I often get in these, which I always get in the Solomons. Uh, so just if you're a wide foot, this might work out for you, the Salming Trail Five. Uh, so that's actually something I'm going to keep uh, an eye on to see if I am feeling locked down enough for these mountain runs in this shoe. And how will I use the Trail Five moving forward? I'm not sure it's going to be a mountain shoe for me. It might be more of an up and down trail system type of shoe. Like today was straight up the mountain and straight down the mountain. Uh, I'm thinking that I'll, I, I might lean a little more toward undula undulating, can I use that word, undulating hills. So kind of just more of an up and down gradual trail system rather than straight up a mountain. Uh, that's what I'm sensing so far, but we shall see again. I'll continue to test the Trail 5 for all of you. And for the price, looking at about $150. I think I saw 157 euros on the Swedish website. And yes, Swedish is the keyword for this vlog. Uh, so 150, I don't know yet. That's at my, but if the build quality is there, then like if you could get two seasons of solid trail running out of one shoe, then it's worth it. And maybe this Vibram outsole combined with this what appears to be a very well-built upper maybe you're in business okay so keep that in mind and for my conclusion on the performance after the first run first impressions i think this shoe will be a a good kind of daily training trail shoe meaning like if i want to go fast i probably won't grab for the trail five I, i'm sensing that but when i want to protect my feet and protect my toes and just like get miles in out on the trails and maybe not mountain trails, then I think this could be the ticket, all right? And that question of the day before we wrap up, um, when was the last time you ventured out and bought a, tr a trail running shoe or just a running shoe in general that was outside of your normal purchasing pattern, okay? like. For me, this is this is way out there. Salming, like I've never. This is the first time I've ever tried Salming uh, versus. So anyway, like yeah, maybe you're a Nike person and you tried Adidas, or maybe you're a Saucony person and you tried Mizuno. Or when did you venture out there? Does that sound good? Because sometimes it's good to stretch our limits a little bit and go outside our normal comfort zone. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, but just need more time at a little higher clip a little higher pace uh quicker pace all right that's it for video number two publishing today um don't think you're gonna want to miss tomorrow's vlog picking up a, a pair of shoes that i believe you all will enjoy seeing all right seek beauty work hard and love each other thanks for being here i know we're publishing a lot publishing a lot of running shoe videos but um it's fun and i hope you enjoy the information but it's like shoes are arriving you're interested in buying shoes. I hope I can shed light on different shoes. So if you keep watching, I, as I always say, will continue to keep going. All right, see you tomorrow.